It's time. It's time. It's time. All right, welcome to the video, guys. Before we get into it, I am not the science guy. I tell this before every tutorial, informational video. I'm not the science guy. I was all self-taught. I don't know all the lingo. I'm not a professional colorist at all. And I like to tell that to you guys. I like to tell that to my cinematography course members. But I do like to think I have a pretty good trained eye and I know how to tell some stories and create some compositions. So with that being said, let's get into it. I have been a huge proponent of Cinephore. That's what I always use. It's reliable. I, I think it's it's more so just like a comfort for me because I've used it for so long. But then there's some downsides. You don't have a lot of flexibility. The highlights are kind of harsh and you just know, like even with just Sony, like you know when someone shoots with a Sony, it just doesn't have that color science that Canon has. and. You know, all these things. Then I was on the internet and I made a discovery. Well, let's just say I discovered the discoverer. I was on YouTube, I saw Christian Montgrab. I never know how to pronounce his last name. Sorry, Christian. I saw his video and he started talking about hybrid log gamma. I've never even heard of it. And I'm like, what is this? And then he directed me to Scott Jeschke. Jeschke? I don't know how to pronounce anybody's last name. But anyways, sent me to Scott's channel, and that's where I really learned about hybrid log gamma. What you're gonna see is in Final Cut Pro, the footage looks horrible, but just hold on because there's a little bit of magic that occurs, and then boom, it looks beautiful. Here is what it looks like. When you throw it into Final Cut Pro, this is what the footage looks like, and, it, and the reason why it looks like this is because it is for an HDR, television so if this was an HDR monitor what you're what you're looking at right now this would all be beautiful and and like the colors would be great um, for some reason in Premiere Pro it doesn't do this it's able to read the files and like you just don't have a problem don't know why that is this is just my experience and how I am grading it in Final Cut Pro but what I did learn is if you go to Final Cut Pro, you go to preferences, this little uh, this little checkbox here, show HDR as raw values. With on default, this is not checked. When you do check this and you look at your footage and preview, this is what it looks like. Okay? It looks like a like a log. It looks more log like. And this is what it looks like when you're actually shooting it and you're seeing it in camera through your viewfinder or monitor or whatever. But then when you throw it into the timeline, it looks like this. I don't know, go figure. On Scott's channel, he, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you my settings right now. I'm gonna throw them on the screen. They're on the screen right now. These are the exact settings that Scott uses and I, I'm just trying them out right now and I like them so far a lot. I might start tweaking them myself and trying to see what I like and if I can improve it even more. But as of right now, Scott's settings, I really, I like them and I'm gonna continue to use them. So just letting you know, those are his settings on, on the screen right now. What he also talks about, how to properly use LUTs and what they're made to actually do. Believe it or not, a LUT, it's not really made to just throw on your footage and, and make it look beautiful and change the colors and stuff like that. You can do that. And that's actually what I'm gonna be doing here, and it's a lot easier. But technically, LUTs are made to, to create a film stock type look, like if you were actually filming on film. So you're supposed to have a LUT that is a LUT negative, and then your grade, and then a LUT print to give you the colors that you're looking for. What I discovered just by like messing around is I just threw on one of my LUTs that I sell from one of my packages, 2.0. So you go into here, you, you, you take custom LUT and you drag and drop onto your clip. And then this appears right here, okay? I threw on, okay, fine. This is me just messing around, right? Because this uh, HLG3 is not a Rec 709 uh, color space, it's actually a Rec 2020 HLG. Okay, so that's really important. So your input has to be Rec 2020 HLG, 
and your output has to be Rec 709 because that's the color space we need to work in is Rec 709. So now it's starting to look really, really saturated and like contrasty and stuff, but it looks normal now or more normal instead of like this. I don't even know what that is. So then all I did was I, I literally, I literally just took this and, and dialed it back to like 0.8. And, th and then I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. Okay, so that's before, that's after. Like, look at the skin tones, super soft and just beautiful. And then I just went to Color Finale, which is a third party plugin. Looks like this. I just dragged and dropped it. And I just did like a little, you know, added a little bit more shadow, gave it a little bit more of a contrasty look. And boom, done. Yo, this this is not sony this does not i'm sorry but this does not look like sony let me blow it up that looks amazing in my i mean the colors the complexity of the colors here and where i have my rosy cheeks where i have these little pimples here are actually accurate they're red they're the the reddish pinkish color that they're supposed to be this is the mind mind blowing part if we go back to Cine 4, this is what it looks like. Like, what? This is what I was editing with? What? Yo, so harsh with the highlights. Look at this. This was like a little overexposed. But look at the difference. Can you see? how soft and feathery this is and buttery. Now keep in mind, this is not graded. So yeah, I know it's desaturated and stuff like that, but this is actually graded, um, Cinephore. And it, it looks great, it looks fine. Uh, I think, you know, I would use this any day. Compare this to this again. Um, you just have a more realistic look. It's just more soft. This is just, it's just kind of hardened. Unbelievable. Um, this is not how I don't, this is not how it's meant to work, but it's working. So I'm gonna continue to do it. Let me show you kind of the flexibility really quick. So if we open the controls of Color Finale. So here are the controls here. Um, look what you can do with the highlights. Look how you can drop the highlights and still have information here in the shadows and you can keep going that's wild that that's wild to me if you start messing with colors in the highlights it actually changes the colors to the highlights nicely without weird artifacts and like weird rainbow colors and stuff okay do you like that terminology it looks clean when you actually start messing around with the colors the flexibility is insane the high like just the highlights alone are insane to me i got an ultimate low light test and this happened yesterday i was invited to go shoot push a t and he was playing at the house of blues and i'm like oh here's my chance to try out this new picture profile no pressure and let me tell you it performed this was the low light test of all tests was this push a t concert from last night all right this is what it looks like when you throw it into final cut pro you throw my okay fine lut on there boom like automatic like it's good to go there like look at this he's look push is ready he's ready i don't want to show you like too much of this footage because I got something coming out later with this. So this looked good. I thought this looked good. Maybe I would tweak it a little bit more. And then I was like, all right, I want to kind of give it an eight mile look. And so I just, you know, I was just kind of messing around, but bam. What do you guys think of this? Would you rock a color grade like that? Like push, he's ready, man. This isn't rendered. So it's going to be, going to be super slow and, and shaky. But guys, what? This is coming out of a Sony. Like this doesn't seem real. This doesn't seem Sony to me. This is so, 
Am I crazy? Is this is this ridiculous? Oh, yeah, this is this is what it looks like. You throw it in a final cut. This is what it looks like. Throw on the LUT. You're like you you you're almost set right there. But then you color grade it even further. Give it that eight mile look, and bam! You add some greens, some teals. Am am I crazy here? Am I crazy? And this was this was shot at 60. This was shot at 60. I can slow this down. Let's go to automatic speed. I mean, come on. Look at the the detail, the crowd. Would you get this with Cinefor? Maybe. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Look at look at the lens flare. Look how beautiful that is. Guys, am I crazy? That's what it looks like when you throw it in a final cut. It blows my mind. Throw on this okay fine LUT. And all I've I've tested other LUTs. Like if you want to if you want to test these out, uh, the links will be in the description. But my other LUTs work. And this I'm not trying to like promote my LUTs here. This isn't this this is I this is just what happened. You don't need to do much. And then I threw in a color grade and gave it more of a, a teal look instead of that blue look. And you got this nice, beautiful lens flare, this color. Like, look at th look at this. Look at him. Look at Push a Go. He's going. Let me know what your thoughts are. That's that's the video. If you guys want to experiment with my LUTs, there's a link to download three of them for free. And then if you want to experiment with all of them, there's a link to to purchase. Um, I haven't tried them with my version one, but I have tried them with my version two LUTs and it works very, very well. I don't know why, but it's magic. All right, that is going to end the video. I hope this helped out a little bit. Um, I'm really, really liking this picture profile. We'll see what happens. The Push Your T video is coming out in the next Rambling Road episode. I'm really excited to share that with you guys. Um, something I also forgot to mention, the new picture profile, the native ISO drops down to 125, not 200 like Cine4 does. And then my cinematography course, you guys have been asking about it. It is probably going to get started towards the end of August. If you want to be on the waiting list, drop your email below. I'm just waiting for the Jiyun Crane gimbals to get here and then we can get things started and you guys can, can all sign up. So drop your emails below if that interests you. We got the Jiyun Crane sponsorship, so about four winners or so uh, have the chance to win brand new gimbals, which is really awesome. I will now leave you. This isn't a Rambling Road episode, so I'll, I'll just see you guys later. Bye-bye.